this is the, the informal AXO talk. You can pick any subject you want that sort of you're engaging with. And um, one thing I love talking about is high school. Who doesn't? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so any, did anybody go to an Arizona high school? A lot of people. Awesome, me too. So is it just Arizona? It feels like this is the place where people identify you based on your high school lineage. Like the first thing, like when they meet you in, in a bar and stuff, they're just like, so where'd you go to high school? Is that at, at all around America or just Arizona? See, it's Arizona. Arizona just wants to get pin you in your clique and keep you there for the rest of your lives. Um, so high school, let's chat about it. Um, there was a Time article. Um, it, I, did anybody read this article? I'll just go through it quickly. Um, it's there, a new study was released basically saying that people who are popular in high school make more money, are healthier, are happier individuals. Does everybody agree with that? No. OK, great. Um, so b b you can see here, um, there, there's a, um, a social scientist, Gabriella Conti, who did this survey. And she says, we estimate that moving from the 20th to 80th percentile of high school popularity distribution yields a 10% wage premium nearly 40 years later. What? OK, and yes. There's some truth to your book predictions. Social scientists find, broadly speaking, um, the brainy kids basically are successful, smart adults. The jocks are healthier and fitter individuals. Um, it goes on, the kids that drank and smoked dope, they're still doing it. Who smoked dope? Are you, you guys still doing it, right? OK. Um, did you, OK, who did it this morning? Who did it this Don't leave me hanging. OK. Um, who's high now? Who's high? Who's high? Uh, so is, is, is this sort of, is this like revelatory, startling? Do you believe this? Yeah. Right? But this is a social scientist. This is the real deal. Um, I think it's a Yes. And what else? What else might it, so where you grew up and what else might it depend on? Your family? Nurture versus nature. All of these things are true. Gabriella is a liar. And I'm sorry for her. She, no, I'm kidding. She's not. She's a nice person. I don't know her. Um, but I'm going to offer another point of view for all of those who said no. Um, to peaking in high school. Is it a clear path to success? One, two, three. No. no. Thank you. I'd like to quote this dude because Urban Dictionary is always correct. <laughs> Urban Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'll tell you a funnier story about this. Um, so basically, it's a phrase that can be used to describe people that routinely bring up high school as like the pinnacle of their experience. Like, I remember in high school, man. Um, and it was like the best time in their life. So peaking in high school is basically the t only time I shined. Um, and then this kind person um, s noticed that a lot of popular kids, athletes, clowns, and bullies, peaked in high school, whereas geeks, nerds, and dweebs are often at the lowest risk of peaking because their high school experiences leave them with nowhere to go up. Bam! Yes, um, what I did for this photo, it didn't exist within this context. I just Googled dweeb, geek, and nerd to find it because I thought this is a good representation. Like this is really, this is, this is, this is who we're talking. This is some of us. <laughs> I'm not saying who. Um, so this offers a, a slightly different, here's a joke about it. Hey, congratulations on being one of the cool kids in high school. Too bad, the rest of your life is sucked. She's got mom jeans. She's got mom jeans because they have, OK, first of all, they're aunt jeans, because they have the pleats. Um, so hold up. Brigadum, too. Um, see, speaking as an affliction, whereas the social scientist, Gabriella, right, finds a direct correlation between popularity and money, health, and awesomeness. Who can you trust? You can trust me, OK? I am um, an unofficial pop cultural scientist. And I have seven case studies that I brought to you today. Are you ready for this journey? OK. I was hoping you'd say yes, so bam, just like that. What? My school days were pretty unhappy. I had the worst high school experience ever. I was a bit of a goth with purple hair, and I was also part of the drama group. So my friends and I were all weird people, and everyone just hated us. How's she doing now? Awesome. OK, so one vote for not peaking in high school. Case study number two. Oh, who's this fine looking man? Shut up, he's cute. I have a crush on him. I don't care what you think. Um, I, was, I was a geek. I was into musical theater, which isn't perceived as the coolest thing. There were guys who were 6'1 with beards. Sorry, you guys. I'm big muscles. Sorry. 
Um, I was a gawky 17-year-old, a skinny, awkward kid. I was a late bloomer. Growing up was hell. Is that anybody else's story? Don't put your hand up. It's OK. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Um, <laughs> case study number three. I remember when I was singing country western mu music. Nobody likes country. No, I'm just kidding. She didn't say that. <laughs> um, so she was alone, and that's what got her to write songs. I'll leave you with hers for a little bit. No, shush, don't. Whoa, 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 whoa. We love her. We're indifferent about her, personally. OK. Um, and, and I think you'll be interested in case study number four. Um, he's one of my faves. What? This dude got a 2.65 GPA in high school. That may, might make you think different about peaking in high school. Although an English class could have helped him think differently about yeah, grammar. OK, right. thank you very much. Um, and he's worth 31.6. Uh, that was when he was alive, so it's more now. It's more now. <laughs> it's more now. OK. Um, and for the only person we could find who peaked in high school and still was like out there in the public eye, everybody else is sort of dissolved into obscurity. Bam, the beeb. What? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so now I'd like to bring up the last two case studies. They're going to remain anonymous. Um, these were really, these were the most uh, difficult to interview, really get in depth with. Um, yeah, I think you'll find their stories a little less sort of comedic or funny and a little more emotional. First one, um, she ate lunch in the school library's bathroom by herself. She loved bands fronted by men who looked like women, Culture Club, The Cure, and Bananarama. She wrote her first book at 16 entitled 16 Dateless and Jewish. <laughs> it remains unpublished to this day. She lied about her age to perform stand-up comedy in clubs, winning prizes like scented candles and hotel stays that she could only give to her teachers. <clears throat> Case study number seven. Bam. Facts. Freshman year, they misspelled his name in the yearbook. God damn it. <laughs> number two, he was in Future Business Leaders of America. Out of the 20 different clubs in high school, that was the 18th most popular club. OK, sit with that for a second. Number three, he ended up wrestling with this notion of popularity as well as wrestling in spandex. OK? Close your eyes. See if you can come up with the persona of that guy. It's not pretty, OK? Now, we talked about a little bit um, yearbook um, sort of predictions. Did anybody have, did, does anybody remember any of the predictions in their yearbook? What was yours? Well, the headline was like, most likely to be a rock Yeah. Most likely to be a rock star. And how did that turn out for you? <laughs> what? OK, great. What other yearbook predictions sort of panned out or didn't quite? Anybody remember? Come on. Don't. Sarah, I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at you. Um, OK, fine, 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 fine. <laughs> Fine, I'll use myself as source material. Um, as you can see, yearbook predictions. There we go. Tanya, drama fag. So I did go into theater, and I am a lesbian. Um, so drama fag was accurate. Um, and just to you know, really pin, pin, pinpoint it, I might win someday a drama fag award, OK? Um, so I did win awards in theater, and I am gay. Good prediction, right? <laughs> Um, no, no, no. I'm, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody has a sense of humor in high school. Um, and so if you go on, if you closed your eyes and you sort of imagine the persona, what the, the person might look like who, who, ate, who ate lunch in the, in the high school library bathroom solo style, because I didn't want to invite anybody in. It was like a little cramped situation. Um, and wrote uh, a book. Maybe she looked a little something like, bam, that. <laughs> Sally Jesse Raphael comes to mind, um, and some less attractive people. OK. Um, and so when, yeah, the hair, I mean, the hair is kind of amazing. A little bit by Sun In. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. Little orange, a little Ronald McDonald, large glasses. I was very hot. Um, and so when you closed your eyes, um, it, for the male persona, 
what what kind of what kind of image do you think we're going to see next? What kind of what kind of uh, person is in the 18th most popular club out of 20, um, and wrestles with the notion of popularity as well as wrestles in in spandex or tights? Okay, great. Uh, maybe he looks a little something like this. <laughs> That's Hamid. Um, <laughs> He sort of has like Geraldo Rivera good looks right there. <laughs> this is freshman year for Hamid, junior year for myself. Um, I, we, I know, little guy, little guy, and it gets better. And so, um, no, 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 no. Um, so this is this is me. The caption reads: Keeping the tradition alive, students react enthusiastically to the seasons seasonal slideshow. Um, actually, I didn't want to be there. I wasn't really happy there. Um, and look at that zit, like prominent, like <laughs> chin left region. Anyway, um, complicated time for me, but maybe not as bad as for this gentleman. <laughs> as you can see, our future business leader of America, come on. You can't, you can't invent that stuff. His head is cocked back like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm going to be cooler when I leave this joint. <laughs> He seems confident. He's representing LA, sort of foreshadowing, shacking up with a lady from LA. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, you know, Hamid turned out okay, as did I. And, and when I got to the end of this sort of yearbook journey, I mean, it's so funny. I actually have my yearbooks like packed away somewhere, and I had to move out of storage, and I found one yearbook. And um, it was the one where both Hamid and I were together in class as one. Um, so in the, the, the theme, their themes for yearbooks, I guess, ours was tradition with a twist. And I thought that was great for any yearbook. Because at the end of our high school experience, hopefully we will transcend our yearbook prediction or become rock stars in totally different ways um, and lead real businesses. And that was what inspired me most. At, at first, when I got this yearbook, I could care less about it. I was just like, I'm so little and nerdy. Nobody likes me. Um, and now I realize that the yearbook predictions are ironically and delightfully true in many ways. So um, thank you very much for letting me talk to you about high school, something I didn't like until today. So thanks, Amit.